Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And this is one of my basic skills videos for workshop stuff. And in this video I'm going to show you how to thread a bar, how to put a thread on a bar, essentially to make it a bit like a bolt, but without the threads all the way down. Now to do that we use a die. Now this die is for M10 thread. I'm not actually sure what pitch it is. I think it's 1.25, pretty sure of that. And this bar is 10 millimeters in diameter. And that's what you need to start off with. If you want a 10 mil thread, then you start off with a 10 mil bar. Now, just to, to show you that, I've got a, a 10 mil bolt here, an M10 bolt, and there's a nut that goes down it, and if we get the vernier calipers, we can measure across the peaks of these threads, and that will give us 10 mil. Okay, so an M10 bolt is, golly, got to do it backwards now, left-handed, is, there you go, look, pretty much near as damn it, 10 millimeters in diameter on the peaks of the threads. So, you start off with, a 10 mil bit of steel rod and pop it in the vise and I'll show you what to do. Now that, um, that die, we can't really use it like that, we need to have a tool to hold it, so we use a die holder. Now you may notice that there's three screws on here and the die has a slit in it. It's not a complete circle, it's got a little tiny gap, and that gap basically aligns with the center screw. So you get the die holder, and you always have the writing, the etched writing, facing outwards when it's in the holder. So I'll pop it in there, look, until it's all the way in. There we go. Nice and flush to the tool, and then, and only then, do we then start to tighten up these? Now tighten up the centre one first, once it's aligned. Okay, tighten up the centre one. Don't go mad, we're not trying to destroy things, it's just to hold it in place. Okay, so the centre one is now on, and then for additional uh, grip, we've got these additional two, these extra two screws that go into little holes that are drilled into the side of that tap. So ultimately all three will be tight. So there you go, that's the, the die installed into the die holder. And you can see we've got the writing facing the camera, it's at the top, and we've got the slot in the die lined up with the centre screw. Now this kind of stuff's pretty cheap these days. In actual fact there's some really cheap um, dies and taps and stuff out on the market. Um, just bear in mind the cheaper you buy more likely it's going to be rubbish, you know. Um, this is, you know, quality um, engineering stuff. It's got to be accurate. It's got to be well made. Otherwise, it's just going to break on you. And when it breaks on you, you're going to get frustrated and probably not get, you know, you're going to lose interest in doing the job. Now, uh, if you look inside the die, you'll see that the threads progressively build up from the side with the, the writing on. If you flick it round, then there's less progression on this side. So you always start with the side that's got the writing on. That's rule of thumb. So once you're using the die holder, you turn that down, turn it upside down into that position, and it's that way around that it goes down the threaded rod. And it's the same as we did with the tap, you know, you, once you're on, turn it a couple of turns, get the thread started, and then half a turn back and then work your way down, you know, half a turn forwards, quarter of a turn back, half a turn forwards, quarter of a turn back, just to get rid of those, uh, those burrs. You don't want the whole thing jamming up. If you try and go too many turns, it's going to jam and you risk breaking something. And also really stressing the die and you can, you can, they can lose their sharpness really quick if you start to abuse them. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we've got the steel bar vertically in the vise, probably about two inches proud of the vise. We don't want to be catching our hands on the vise 
uh, top of the vise there. And we've got the die, and we're going to rotate the die around so that the, the writing is downwards, and we place it onto the actual rod itself. Now, it is quite important that the end of the rod is a reasonably square cut. You don't want to try and do this when it's cut really badly cut. So make sure that that's tidy. If it's not, then dress it with a file. And then just try and hold it as flat as you can and rotate clockwise. And you'll, you'll feel it start to bite into the steel. Very, very important that you try and hold it as still as possible and as level as possible. Once it's started to cut the threads, then we'll worry about going back a little bit once it starts to get a bit tight. There we go. Okay. So the threads have started to cut. Let's get some cutting fluid put onto there. Need to lubricate this as we're doing it. We don't want to damage the, the teeth on the die. We need to be able to use this another day. They're quite tricky to get started of these. There we go. Excellent. Once you start it, it's a lot easier. And I suppose really you've just got to decide how far down the, the, the rod you want the threads to be. Depends what you're making, I suppose. And after every sort of fourth or fifth turn, just make sure you've got some more uh, either cutting fluid or oil. I actually prefer oil for this kind of stuff because it tends to, to hang around. Cutting fluid tends to run away too quick, so you end up using loads of it. And again, make sure you've chosen the right kind of steel for the rod. You don't want to be using, or trying to put threads on a hardened steel rod or something that's made out of spring steel because it's going to be too hard and it's going to damage your die. There you go. I think we'll do about 20 mil of threads. That should be enough for this video. And when you've got down to the depth that you want, just bring the die back up. Again, just running it forwards and backwards just to make sure it's cleaning out and finishing those threads nice and tidy so there's no burrs stuck to them or anything like that. There we go. Great job. Okay, so now the big test, the nut. Will the nut go onto our new threads? Why, it will. That's awesome, look at that. I shouldn't sound so surprised really, should I? So there you go, we've cut a thread onto a rod, essentially made our own bolt. Now sure, I could have made those threads a lot further down, but there was no need, it was just an example to show you how to cut a thread uh, on a rod, you know, how to use a die for cutting threads. Um, that came out really well. This is obviously pretty good steel for, for making this kind of stuff. Um, it's the first time I've done a thread on a rod for a long time, actually, on, on this kind of steel at least. Um, so there you go. Really easy task and again, really useful. It can save you a fortune, you know, going out and buying all the expensive bolts that you need if you want to make something. You can actually make your own. Save you, save yourself a big chunk of money. And that justifies buying the, 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 the tap and die set initially. And, you know, your missus is going to get upset when you spend 200 bucks on a tap and die set. But it saves you money, guys. So buy the toys. Okay. I um, hope you found that video helpful. My name's Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland. Uh, if you have any questions or comments on this particular video, then please leave them down at the bottom. And I'll do my very best to get back to you as soon as I can. 
Um, if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, then please do subscribe to the channel, more the merrier, and you'll receive notifications uh, as and when I upload new videos for you. Um, okay, well, there we go. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Over and out.